Hello again, everybody. This is Gary Roth with the Blue Collar Consulting Group. We are going to talk about audience this evening. I recently re-cracked open the book written by Michael Hyatt called Platform, How to Get Noticed in a Noisy World. And if you have any ambitions to utilize social media in any capacity, you can appreciate that title. Now, let's be honest. I can also, we can also appreciate that title even if we're not trying to do anything on social media because let's face it we interact with people all the time and the people that we interact with are very important to us obviously hopefully and they certainly have a large amount of significance in our lives regardless of whether or not we want to admit that so let's talk about audience let's talk about audience anytime you speak anytime you pick up the phone anytime you leave your house anytime you jump online, there is an audience, okay? So, people like me, Gary Roth Blue Collar Consulting Group, I try to gather an audience. I want my audience to be bigger. I want to have a large audience so that I can be a person of influence. I recognize fully that is not everyone's ambition. However, like I just said, everybody has an audience and so therefore, it's important to use that audience for its proper purpose. Let's say you're a mom and you have five or six children. Those five or six children are probably your audience quite a bit. So I don't need to tell you that the way you communicate to that audience is very important. Now, if you separate those children into five rooms or if you're fortunate enough to have that big of a house where each child has their own room, you know as well as I do that you're going to communicate to each child a little differently. There's only a few times where there's going to be corporate speak where one general message has to work. And like at the dinner table, for instance, all right, everybody come and eat. So we know that there are very general language for a broad audience and then there is very specific language for smaller audiences or more specific audiences. If you need an example of this, all you have to do is say Trump supporter or Trump hater, and you will see a very, very distinct audience. So we know that there are differences in audiences, and we know that there are differences in the way that you talk to those audiences. So the audience is your platform. Now, if you want to be any kind of social media person, if you want to further a product or a service or an idea or anything on social media, you have to be specific with your audience. That's just the way that it is. There are very few, there are very few general messages that will hit with any kind of power these days. Sure, be nice, sure, exercise, eat right, and everything like that. But that's about as far as you get with general messages because right after that, everything's gonna be hyper specific. Okay, eat right, what do you mean? Keto, uh, you know, what is that? 10,000 different diets, you know, Herbalife or this, that, or whatever, protein or creatine. So very quickly, very quickly, you can fragment into very specific conversations. So I will tell you that I would not recommend speaking until you know who you are speaking to. How often, how often has a conversation that you've had gone astray? Or how many times have you had somebody walk into your conversation halfway through? I have had that happen to me more often than I care to admit, and it's horrifically embarrassing. I don't need to tell you all that because you already know. So, know your audience, know who you're talking to, all right? And our president, you know, gosh, you know, you try to give the guy a fair shake, but the tweet that he just made about Don Lemon, and I think that's his name, Don Lemon and LeBron James, talking about how he tried to make LeBron James look smart, and that's hard. This is on the same interview where this LeBron James was uh, talking about he opened a school, like he spent like a couple million dollars on a school helping underprivileged kids. And then Trump's dumbass decided to freaking trash them both. I was like, give me a break. First of all, you don't have to trash it, just leave it alone. And second of all, like, come on, man. He was talking about a school, right? Like, I, that's, that's tough to defend, man. So my point is that 
there are general, very few general bad or general good, um, you know, statements, you know, like there's just very few things that you can say that are good for all people. There's a lot of bad stuff that you can say that affect a lot of people. All right. So, you know, the, the weight of approval is actually against you. So you, you have to know your audience. So, and in the social media world, everything is saved. Everything is visible despite your best efforts not to always know your audience. Okay. If you are a politically charged person, I get that. I, I totally fine with that. You, you've got to you've got to be careful with the message that you speak, even to your supporters, because other people are listening. And so, if you're not careful with your message, even to your supporters, your your adversaries, so to speak, are going to know that. So, when you let's say you're in the social media world, and let's say you're a musical artist, right? You you should really be careful. You should really be careful on how you use your platform. All right. Look at Colin Kaepernick. He started the kneeling at the national anthem thing. I personally don't have a problem with it. If you do, that's fine. I respect your problem with it, all right? I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I've been in the Army for 20 years. They are not trying to disrespect soldiers. People are kind of injecting that into the argument. They are trying to get attention to police brutality against uh, minorities, I, I believe. I haven't done a ton of research on it, but it, just, it doesn't bother me. But the problem is Colin Kaepernick used his NFL platform to spread a very powerful message. Unfortunately for Colin, he probably should have focused more on football because his football skills uh, could not outweigh the bias of the thing that he that had happened. Think about like if, um, I don't know, another player that had done it and continued to perform on the football field at a high level. We wouldn't be having this conversation because since Colin did the the Neil thing and then he freaking football started sucking no it's kind of a joke not only does it hurt his cause but it hurt his career and you know who knows what would have happened otherwise so you know we all have our platforms and it's important to use them properly so that you can continue your freaking message how many uh okay so how many national anthems is Colin Kaepernick gonna kneel at now zero because out of the freaking league so Use your platform carefully. Know your audience. You can do more off camera than you can on camera. Okay, so don't don't get it twisted. Don't sit there and think that you're impervious. All right, just because you're the president of the United States doesn't mean you don't have backlash. Doesn't mean there's not going to be consequences for your stupidity. And again, it just it drives me nuts because there are problems that need to be solved. There are issues that need to be addressed, and we don't need to go to Twitter to freaking try to insult our adversaries. I am a fan of 100% positive, so upsell. Anytime you're giving a, a, any kind of media talk, whatever, make sure you upsell. Don't trash your opponent. Don't trash anything else out there. Stay positive, all right? Do the right thing, all right? Talk about good things. Talk about how your product is better. Talk about how your service is better. Talk about how dynamic you are. Talk about how rich your heritage is. Talk about something that's positive. Talk about something that's motivational and inspirational so that more and more people in your audience can share that stuff they can retweet that stuff they can comment on that stuff they can have that stuff in their in their arsenal and then you ultimately benefit by keeping a somewhat neutral positive message you can appeal to more people all right there's a lot of people that are for there's a lot of people that are against and there's a lot of people on the fence and there's probably more people on the fence than there is on either side. So if you appeal to them with, in my opinion, like logic and reason and tempered emotion, I think that you're going to get more people to listen to you than if you just fly off the handle. Or if they do listen, you're more entertainment than movement. Okay, keep that in mind. More entertainment than movement. All right, so know your audience. If, if they want to be entertained, then entertain them. But if they want to be moved, if they need to be moved, Think about that. It's not what you know, it's who you know and who is listening to you. If you don't have anybody listening to you, you don't have an audience. Like right now, I don't have an audience. Hopefully somebody will play it back. But, you know, I have a somewhat decent subscriber base. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please reconsider. So you've got to take care of your audience. You've got to honor the time that they took to listen to you in the first place to support you to give you money take the time to tune in whatever to replay it to freaking retweet it 
whatever the case may be you need to honor the people that choose to give you their time time's more valuable than money because you can't get more than 24 hours a day you just can't so please keep that in mind anytime you go online anytime you talk to your children your friends your relatives the guy next to you in traffic that's an audience so what are you going to do with the people that are listening and watching you are you going to take care of it are you going to leverage it are you going to try to make the world better or are you going to take this opportunity just to do some trash talking i would encourage you to make the world a better place ignore negativity brush off the haters and the people that say you're not going to do nothing you know whatever Take that as a challenge. Get a chip on your shoulder. There's nothing wrong with a little chip on the shoulder. Trust me. I've got a little one myself. So, you know, the, the world is yours. An audience is out there waiting for you. So I would encourage you to get out there, get yourself in front of them, showcase your talent, work on your talent, and make the world a better place. Listen, my name is Gary Roth, Blue Collar Consulting Group. I am going to sign off now. I know this was a short one. Thanks for sticking around. Anybody that tuned in live, you are absolutely awesome. I'm going to wrap up this podcast episode <clears throat> as I choke a little bit and just say, please tell somebody you love them. It really does make a difference. You never know that you might be able to prevent a tragedy. How many times have we seen these mass school shooters that were just rejects and outcasts by people like you so the same people like you can make a difference and turn that around. So please tell somebody you love them today and take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and do some amazing things.